Welcome. Hey, what? Oh. Always. Always. <laughs> that's just, that's the amateurish way to do it, right? I'm sorry. I'm but sorry. It would be, it would, people would understand if we couldn't see each other, but they right. could see us seeing them seeing each other. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that? we What's can't see them, though. If we could, they might be creeped out by that. <laughs> that would be kind of creepy. That, that I also feel mean, like somebody's, somebody's watching, watching me. me. Yeah. Can yeah. I get no privacy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but welcome. I am Brad Reed. What's up? I'm Cameo. How y'all doing? We are the nerds, two men. Um, I started off as a nerd a long time ago, became a man. And Cameo is kind of just trying to figure out. The I'm, whole I'm transitioning thing. from an adolescent to a man yeah boy oh. boys to men abc yeah. bbd bbd mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> i like it um uh so we're gonna talk westworld to begin with on this show and then get into extraction on netflix all right so uh spoilers abound for those of you on the live chat and please share leave a uh you know, uh, a nice comment or review wherever you listen to the podcasts. We're mm -hmm. everywhere. We're on Apple, Google, uh, Spotify, all those places. So that would be awesome. Yeah, I, I got to get uh, Chris Little People. He said the M word <laughs> in the group chat. Yeah, he's a, but like that's the way his last name is pronounced. He said, even though I say Midye, <laughs> I always have to go with the the European pronouncement. <laughs> Just, you know, I, we don't, we're not here to offend anyone. Yeah, no, not at all. Maybe each other, but that's about as far as we go. Yeah. All right. So here we are Westworld season three, episode seven. We're on the verge of the final episode. Extinction, yeah. human extinction. Both of those things are true, actually, because yeah. uh, a lot is going on now. And I think we should get into it. I, I believe this episode was uh, more of a Caleb-esque episode so that we could yeah. get the answers everybody's been wanting on him. But it kind of starts off, I think, a little bit with Charlotte, right? Shaloris. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, because she survived, as we all know. But then... Um, she decided that she doesn't want to be a part of Dolores's little revolution anymore. What did you think about that? Did you see that coming? Um, <clears throat> yes, I kind of saw it coming at the end of what was episode five yeah. or episode six. Where'd Whenever the car blew up. Yeah, six. So um, I saw it after that because she was so ready to just to be her her son and her ex or, you know, um, separated husband, whatever they were. Um, I felt like she was, she was wanting that family kind of like what she had before all this stuff was going on yeah. in Westworld, you know, when she was, you know, so into, you know, taking care of her dad and, and, you know, Teddy. So I'm thinking that was her whole, um, her whole pro technically program um that she needed to be on because i mean she didn't want to get used she still has that dolores in her mm -hmm. where she doesn't want to be used and excuse me and has the whole you know whole mindset i'm i'm taking care of my family right well um what uh, here's something i was wondering and tell me i might just be overlooking this but didn't Sharak Sharak however you say his name didn't he come in last episode and burn down all the uh original all the uh, ho hosts that yeah. were so how did charlotte get burnt up and then get back to normal uh maybe it was her will to live i don't know yeah i mean th i know they have like those little they showed one that they were even using like i think they use it on humans too like because they were using it on caleb later on in the yeah. episode but I was just kind of curious about how she got like a new host body after mm -hmm. being burnt to a crisp. Yeah. I'm pretty sure either a, they have like a safe house or they were on, or, you know, she used that, that medical equipment. Um, 
So this episode was called Past Pawn. Uh, lots of stuff went down, but uh, Masashi, who also was Dolores, mm-hmm. um, she wow, she wow, uh, Masashi actually gets taken out too. And as violent as things have been lately, his passing, which he it wasn't really him, but the 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 Lashi, the Masashi. Lores, how do you do that one? Uh, de la Sashi. Yeah. <laughs> um, but but yeah. Oh, he, go ahead. He gets. <laughs> yeah, like half. Like he got he got uh Darth mauled. No, well I thought was it? I thought it was yeah because just, cause, just cause the head. she. No, she got him in the stomach. And she and I forgot her name who who got him, but she was like, "You're a disgrace to Masashi. He was a good man." And whenever she stabbed him, she went around him. Yeah, and uh, yeah. I'm gonna assume that cut him in half. Okay, because uh, when they were dragging, I thought that they were only dragging the the um body the head. the head, but I could be wrong. So. No, I think it was, you know, half of the body. Yeah. Um, okay, well, either way, uh, I would have liked to have seen a little bit more of that. That would have been fun. But <laughs> but I like Masashi, so I'm sad about him being gone now. Yeah, Clementine though, came back. Yeah, I saw that, and I kind of figured we'd see Clementine. But it's interesting how, like, Clementine and Felix, like, just one time they popped up this whole season. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Uh, that was interesting. I they're probably not going to be used a whole lot going forward. I I wouldn't think. Um, but but so the bit like I say that was a couple of things that happened that stood out other than Caleb and then um, Bernard Stubbs and the man in black, who is now the man in white because he's in the white uh, <laughs> yeah jumpsuit or not jumpsuit, but you know what I'm saying the uh, right. But uh, so the interesting things that came about with those two, as we find out throughout the story, was Caleb and the man in white, the man in black, Mm -hmm. William, have had like this clockwork orange type thing (laughs) go on with them where they've been basically repurposed into better people, supposedly. Yeah, yeah. But neither of them did, really. And I'm not even sure when they would have repurposed William because there, it seems like there's a pretty steady timeline of him going to Westworld, and every time he goes to Westworld, he's never like like progressively actually he's worse as a person. Yeah. So, how, like they don't, I don't believe they repurpose them to be good, uh, because Caleb also becomes a mercenary basically, and we mm-hmm. find out his whole job. It was to search for these outliers who yeah. aren't aren't the best of people, and so they use him and his buddy Francis to to hunt these people down. Which brings back what we were talking about early in the season when I was like, when Francis gets killed, it doesn't look like they're in the process of a military operation. Yeah, this answers that question. Yeah, yeah, I, I think it does. Um, and I think didn't I say that there he had a connection to Rohoboam? Who at Caleb? some point? Caleb, yeah. Yeah, you did. So yeah. And I, that whole thing is crazy. Yeah, I, cause I, I mean, I guess they can, you know, obviously they're conditioning you to believe whatever you want, uh, or whatever not whatever you want, but whatever they want sure. to push to push their agenda. And it's kind of um you know, parallel to what's going on in the world today, uh, we have the media who pushes, you know, certain things on mm-hmm. people. Right. Um, we have a president who told people or not. He didn't tell people. He said, you know, well, what about uh, drinking some bleach <laughs> or disinfectants? You sure. know, and, and some, a- some people. That's People a, actually did that stuff. So I'm wondering. And that's a good example. And, you know, we don't get too political on this show. No. But, th- no, but, but I mean, but that's. I do want to address that only because 
you know, I could see both both sides on that thing where he didn't tell people you should go try this, right? He, what he, right, right. What right. he said was he's talking to a doctor or he's ta- he's doing his thing and he's he's like, I've heard that this and this help with you know killing viruses, and he looks. Or he turns to the doctor and he's like, you're looking into that, right? You're looking into maybe treating it with bleach or whatever, you know? Right, 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 right. And so, but but yes, you're right. People took that and on one, one spectrum, Donald Trump's telling everybody to drink bleach. And then right. on the other spectrum, you know, oh, he didn't say that at all. And it's like, you can, you can pretty much say that somebody said anything and make it fit your agenda. And that's what they're right. doing in Westworld to push people into doing things that they want them to do. Yeah. Uh, Josh and uh, Abe um, joined us. So thanks for joining, guys. Appreciate yeah. that. Alicia, Lori Frisk, my aunt, Patrick nice. Polks, they're all joined in. And so thank you, thank you. We're talking Westworld. Spoilers, by the way. So. Yep, yep. Um, but yeah, I mean, this, this society that they're trying to build and it's basically come to find out it's, it's all kind of being crafted by Solomon, this AI who's, who is who's created, brother. Yeah, created by Sirach's brother, who is schizophrenic mm-hmm. and this AI has basically, um, run so many variations of how the world could end that it's. Uh, driven itself insane. Yeah. So I think I think if you had that much knowledge, and just like um, Doctor Strange, who saw like over fourteen million different uh, uh, outcomes to the future, like that would probably make you go insane. Yeah. Even or like a computer overload. Mm-hmm. Uh. So I kind of see how, because wasn't uh, uh, Sorak's brother powering the, wasn't he powering Solomon? I don't know. Because was it, because he was the one that was in, in the, in the case, right? I, I don't, I, you might've picked up on that. I, I don't think I did. So, okay. but, but psh, there's all kinds of stuff, you know, we could watch yeah. this a million times and find a bunch of different stuff, but I'm not sure about that part of itself. So. Okay. Okay. But, but yeah, it's just, it's kind of weird how, and I understand, uh, uh, I was about to call her Rachel, but that's her middle name, her real Evan name. Rachel but Wood. De- Dolores. Yeah. 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 Dolores. Um, I can see why Dolores is, you know, wanting to cut those ties to be, you know, to be free because, you know, her being a host and basically humans are hosts, which you said, uh, I think the very beginning of this whole season is that, you know, what if they, what if, you know, uh, the world that we're in now, yeah, yeah, none of them are real. And technically they're not because they're, they're programmed to be doing these things without them even knowing just like the hosts are. Yeah. They're since they're programmed, they're, yeah, yeah, they're they're not people. They're not, I think what makes humans human, even though that there will that you know there might be AIs in real life who can do a lot of things and they seem like they've got feelings or all they're doing is running back ifs and <coughs> ands that have been mm-hmm. programmed into them. If, yeah, if this say this, you know, if this say this, and so. It couldn't know something that wasn't programmed into it. But then again, could we know something that wasn't programmed into us? Do we know things right. that aren't told to us? Because that's really kind of all we do know, right? It's like right. What's, what's been told to us. So yeah. that's the kind of questions that Westworld's bringing up. And I love it. Uh, I yeah. still, you, I mentioned this every show, I'm sure, but I miss just the cinematography of the Old West the music, mm. all of that from the past seasons. But this season's been pretty... Uh, it hasn't been action-packed every episode, but this was a pretty good one. Yeah, I, I like the the fight scene between uh, Maeve and Dolores. Yeah. And I didn't, I didn't know uh, Evan Rachel Woods was a uh, black belt in Taekwondo. Mm-hmm. Or was it Taekwondo? I think it was. 
Yeah. But yeah, she yeah. was like, um, if you watch the 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 end bits of it, you know, the making of this episode. Um, and to me, I mean, I watch a lot of kung fu karate movies. Mm -hmm. I don't think they were using her to her, you know, ability. Right. Uh, because it kind I mean, obviously, I don't know Tandy Newton. She didn't say she was, you know, took any fighting classes or anything like that. Maybe they they were just trying to uh, water it down yeah. for her whenever she was, you know, you did see her fight. But um, I think they kind of, even though she said that she was happy, or I'll just call it Dolores. Dolores was happy that she was able to do that, um, you know, shine a little bit more because of this 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 fight yeah uh i will um but i i still feel like it was kind of watered down for her if she's a black belt you know i but, mean so you know that was a good fight like you said uh dolores ends up losing half an arm that was crazy <laughs> that was crazy and then uh basically i didn't see that coming <laughs> no no and then i didn't see she basically pulls uh, an EMP bomb or something like that, and uh, it, it ends on both. So mm -hmm. I'm sure at some point they're going to come back. Yeah. Right. Well, I, I mean, I hope so, because I think they they do fight again. At least that's what the preview looked like for yeah. this coming up episode on Sunday. But but basically, Caleb's now in charge of the revolution, and he's been given the the. Uh, a, a hard drive, a thumb drive, some kind of drive that by Solomon with the information on how to stop the revolution, correct? Mm, maybe, maybe not. What, well, what do you think it gave him? Uh, well, if Solomon is there Or not to stop the revolution to continue to like, you know, get it to its end though, but win uh, the revolution basically, I think. Uh, I don't know. I think I Solomon's think, helping him, right? No, I don't know. I'm I'm kind of fifty fifty on that. Mm -hmm. I feel like that would be too easy. Oh, you well, know, it's going to be. Yeah, yeah. Something's so, going to happen. Maybe Solomon's tricking tricking him. Maybe, and that's and that's what I'm I'm kind of like. Well, maybe it'll answer. You know, on the last episode coming up Sunday, or maybe it's you know we did talk about that it's going to be renewed for a fourth season. Um, maybe we'll talk even a little bit more about that in the, in the coming season, but, um, I'm going to, I'm going to hold off and say that I think that, that it's going to be a, uh, uh, a kick in the face to Caleb, but Caleb's going to find somehow to get around that, or Dolores is going to help him or Maeve might come over to Dolores' side. Well, we I still have Bernard. Mm-hmm. Um, Maeve, well, mm -hmm. Maeve's, Maeve's been pulled, you know, she's, she's not in the picture as of right now, but we'll see what happens the next episode, but Bernard Stubbs and, and William, we still got to find out because at the end he, he told Bernard and Stubbs kill me because I'm going to kill you the first chance I get. They don't do it. Mm -hmm. They think they could still, maybe he could still be valuable. And then now it, you know, he might have the upper hand on them. We'll see next episode. He found, yeah. he found that shotgun. So um, I'm kind of interested to see how they're going to play into the end here in this last episode coming up Sunday. Because I, I feel like Bernard and Stubbs and even the, the William, their story has been a little ambiguous as to where it's going. I'm, I'm not sure with them. Char mm -hmm. Charlotte, obviously, is going to probably also be something that is in the way of Dolores and Caleb's plans. Yeah. And again, we've said, I think she has turned into the star of this, the show <clears throat> this season because she's awesome. I mean, yeah. Movies. She's in all the great movies, Thor Ragnarok. She's great. I just love her. She was good in Creed and Creed too. Oh yeah. She's, she's, I think she's the star of this season. So I think we're yeah. going to see a good end. For, I don't think an end for her character, but I think in the end of this season, we're going to see a good storyline, you know, end for her. So yeah. next week, I guess. Oh, one more thing about Caleb, though. Do you think that's the end of 
all the revelations. So he's a mercenary instead who killed Francis. Didn't, you know, uh, wasn't actually as friendly as we thought. I mean, they were friends, but in the end, it was all about he thought he might betray him, so he killed him first. Yeah. So, so it wasn't what Caleb originally thought. It wasn't what we thought. So nothing is as it seems. Mm-hmm. Do you think that there's more to Caleb because that one guy said you were the worst of them all? Was it just because um, he was a hunter of other outliers? Or do you think that there's going to be something else that we're going to find out about Caleb? Do you think, okay, because the brother, Sirach, was schizophrenic, do you think he is in Caleb and Caleb is a host? Hmm. Hmm. That's a good, I don't know. I don't, I'm I don't not going to put it out there as a, a, a theory that I've been thinking on. Cause I just came up with it, Yeah. but, but I, I just think that there's something else and it's going to tie in together next this, uh, actually this at the end of this week on, on Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <sighs> I don't know that that's go ahead. Oh, uh, well just give me, give me your theory for next week for the end of the show. Uh, um of well season anyway i don't think william is going to kill um uh bernard or Stubbs, or mm-hmm. if he does kill anybody it'll be uh Stubbs. um but i think bernard's story isn't finished yet yeah um i still think bernard knows deep down somewhere in his programming that something needs to needs to happen whether it's to aid mave or because I, I feel like Ford, they, I still think he's tied into all of this. Yeah. I still think Ford is behind all of this. That this, um, this is programming that he wrote a long time ago. Right, right. Yeah. And, you know, just in case if this happens. Um, because Ford, I mean, at Ford, Bernard is still a host. He has programming. So I was like, there, like, yeah, there has to be something going on. And, um, and Solomon, you know, the big round computer thing mm-hmm. you had kind of mentioned about Sirach's brother being tied to that, you know, somehow like maybe even living through it now. Right. Yeah. Uh, it, it does kind of have that wizard of Oz, like what's behind that curtain kind of feel. Right. To it. So. I think you could, yeah. you could see something come to light with that too. Yeah, and I and I do think that Tessa Thompson, I think she's uh, following everything that's going on. Um, I, shoot, I even think that she might bring back Maeve somehow. Caleb's going to obviously help. Uh, what's her face, Dolores? Um, because I don't think I think he's too dependent on somebody. Because mm-hmm. um, I mean, he did have uh francis growing or not growing up but doing all of the things and oh real quick before i go any any further on that um it's crazy how they you know when they were saying you know you were you know you were supposed to find these outliers and hunt them down and kill them blah 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 Mm -hmm. i didn't even pick up on that when they were when they were showing his phone like all the 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 jobs that he was doing. Oh yeah. He he just thought that he was just doing regular odd jobs right. to get extra money. Yeah, like like I say, like GTO style. Yeah, right, or right. GTA style. Grand GTA, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah so <laughs> excuse me. But yeah, it's uh I'm I'm thinking that at the end of this season, like I said, Tessa Thompson's gonna end up helping Bernard and Maeve to at least some extent. Either she might be getting killed off uh, on Sunday, or I hope not. I hope not either. Uh, I I do think that she possibly could be a a anchor for the real Dolores. Yeah. Um. But I don't know. We'll we'll see. We'll see. So I'm thinking when we after the show, uh, it'll be because what we've been doing is we've been doing the review about a week later. That way, everybody has a chance to see it because we we spoil the shit out of it. <laughs> mm, yeah. Pardon the language, but we spoil <laughs> it uh, hardcore. So, um, 
I, I wanted to have a couple of friends on as well. My, uh, because, uh, a couple seasons ago, me and chip Goddard did a show called Jest world where we reviewed every show. And we also, a lot of times had my tattoo artist, Travis Griffin at no regrets tattoo on. And, uh, they've been watching it too. And I think we might have them on for the last episode to see what they thought about it. What do you think about that? Hey, I'm cool with that. Right on. All right. Well, uh, cameo. So we went from spoiling uh, Westworld to now we're going to spoil Extraction, Extraction on Netflix, which there's not a lot of spoilers that we're going to get into, but there is like the very last scene that I do want to discuss. Okay. So we'll spoil it. We'll give you another spoiler alert before we get there. But uh, just kind of a general how I felt about extraction with Chris Hemsworth. One of the Russo brothers was the writer of this show, uh, this movie and it's Mm -hmm. on Netflix. I thought it was, let's say I would give it one and a half Kevin Smith's where I think it was a good movie. It wasn't great, but I thought it was good. It reminded me of kind of like the old, uh, man, like eighties movies where you had Arnold and some young kid and you know, he's saving her or whatever last action hero. Yeah, that one. And I'm thinking of another one commando. I think so. Wasn't yeah. that with his daughter? Uh, uh-huh. something like that. Yeah. But th- so it's kind of that trope where the, the action stars trying to rescue a kid and you get a little bit of that interaction. And, uh, so kind of a typical kind of movie in that regard. But I also thought that there was lots of great <laughs> action scenes. A lot of cool chase scenes and the camera work as they're going around the cars and stuff, getting in and zooming out and all that really made it a fun, exciting movie. Yeah, but I will say this, though. um, The Red Guardian is in it, Dave Harbour. Yes, Um, and I loved it. I loved his. Yeah, he he, he makes a cameo, basically. Yeah, Um, but now we know who would really win out of <laughs> Red Guardian and Thor. And Thor. If anybody yeah. ever wanted to to figure that out. <laughs> that was a good fight. It was. It was. I like that fight a lot. There was lots of good fights. And so, um, like I said, it was just a fun action movie. Not Nothing groundbreaking, but that's why I give it one and a half Kevin, crying Kevin Smith. What did you give it? I, I, I'd say one and a half, too. Okay, cool. Um, now one, let's One and a half also. Yeah. So, okay. F- for the thousand and three people who are watching right now. Yeah. Spoilers for the end of Extraction. The end. Right The very now. end. Spoilers, spoilers, spoilers. Here we go. All right. It would appear that Chris Hemsworth met his maker at the end of this movie. Uh-huh. But there's a scene where the kid is kind of replicating something that Chris Hemsworth had done earlier in the movie. And when he's done, he sees what looks to be Chris Hemsworth. Now, do you think that he lived or do you think that that was like a spiritual homage? And so he's seeing what he would like to see, which is Chris Hemsworth character. Um, After that, I, th- I, I, th- I think that he actually did die. <laughs> so, so what he, do you think? So what he saw at the end, you think was just a, illusion yeah yeah yeah. me too because i mean throughout the whole movie um i mean once chris hemsworth uh got him it it was like like you said almost like a a a buddy uh movie Mm -hmm. even though it wasn't like kiki la la or anything like that but they they got closer together you know chris hemsworth didn't he you know tell him about his past yeah i think so yeah there was like like i said they had a little bonding yeah so, yeah, I think, you know, that was more of a because didn't it say like three, six months later when he when he did go yeah. to the pool. Mm-hmm. So, you know, having that that uh, life changing traumatic time. I, I don't know how long it actually, you know, went because it didn't say, you know, how long the the him being kidnapped and him running away lasted. But I mean. I'm pretty sure that takes a toll on you and the person that got you out of that whole thing. Oh, sure. You have 
a type of connection with them. Yeah. So, yeah, that's what I think it was. It was just that connection, you know. Yeah. He got me out of this. You know, he was cool. Um, I miss he kept him. Me safe. Yeah. I miss him yeah. exactly. So uh, I I liked that though that there you know again it's a dumb action flick basically that's based on a bunch of action flicks you've seen already but it was a good it was a good one it was worth watching for sure but it left you a little something at the end to be like huh that's what I thought yeah yeah his lady friend I'll tell you what she was upset yeah she, <laughs> yeah you don't want to cross her. <laughs> no uh good movie though i recommend it hopefully somebody didn't come in and think that and didn't hear the spoiler alerts because we just spoiled the crap out of it yeah we did but it's okay because this is a podcast and people probably have the same question that we had yeah or were you questioning it or did you are you pretty certain that that's what's happening because i no. think it's i think they left it ambiguous for you to draw your own conclusion yeah, that's that's what I'm I'm chopping it up to. Is. But every action movie, what do they have? What's the staple of every action movie? A sequel. Yeah, I mean, with everybody, um, I can't remember. Let me see if I can check it right now. Because um, you know how Netflix has like the the top rated mm-hmm. movies now, or watch or shows, whatever yeah, it is. Yeah. I want to say it was at number one. Oh, no. It's at number two now. Uh, what's at number one? Uh, Never Have I Ever. I don't think I've seen that one. No, I think it is a show, though. Hmm. Yeah. Well, that's the, the thing is, of course, Extraction probably gets a little bit more benefit than even like Bright did or some of those movies, The Irishman, where they were only released on Netflix because those movies still had to compete with movies at the theater. Yeah. Whereas now extraction pretty much has a captive audience. Yeah. Speaking of, uh, the movie theaters, did you hear about AMC? Yeah. Let's talk about that for a second. So they're saying that they're not going to show any more universal movies. Um, AMC and I think Regal now got in on that and that's because, why? because universal has said, that they're going to offer their movies the same day video on demand as in theaters. And so the theaters are mad about that. Now, I don't, I mean, because this is, of course, this is all working right now, but everybody's going to want to open in the future and be open, you know. Yeah. So, of course, the movie theaters hate this idea. My thing is, if you're not going to go see a movie in the theater, you're not going to go see it. So if you're going to watch it online... That's just another way to make money if you're universal. If you're right. AMC, you're just screwed. <laughs> Maybe they need to come up with some kind of uh, AMC movies on demand channel or something. I don't know. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Yeah, like either either get with the program mm-hmm. or... But there or, are going to be movies that I'm going to want to see at the theater. Right. In IMAX, There's, whatever. You know, if uh, Disney was to release Black Widow on disney plus or on man whatever streaming service uh yes i will watch it at home and more than likely i will watch it in theaters but i don't see why if universal is going to do that with video on demand at least at least give the theaters a week i'd say give them a week uh because me and you typically if it's a movie that's like a superhero movie or something like that we go see it on that Thursday. Yeah. And I c- will continue to do so for movies like that. But there's mm-hmm. certain movies I'm not going to go see at the movie theater. Yeah. I'm just not. So if it's not pop if, if it's not f- for me if it's not pop culture related, yeah. I'm not going to go watch it in theaters. I'm just not. Right. Like like my wife, my she wife. got me hooked up <laughs> she got me hooked on the show uh, Downton Abbey. Mm-hmm. I'm so mad that I never, you know, watched it when it came out because I love that show. But they uh, recently released a um, a uh, a movie, right? So, but 
And that was before the whole coronavirus shut down everything. Um, but I didn't, that's not a movie I would want to go see in the theaters. Yeah. So it's like a movie like that. Like, man, I'm good. Yeah, I agree. It's, there's just like, uh, the way back that movie with Ben Affleck, that's yeah. a movie I want to see. And I still haven't watched it on demand. I've been saying I'm going to watch it, but that is one I want to see. And I will watch it on demand. I would not go see that movie at the theater. Yeah. So I think that they need to work this out and keep the theaters open, figure out a way. But I do feel like people well, should see, have the option to want to watch because some people can't go to theaters. They just can't that, go. But see, also, too, I, the only real uh, uh, big movie companies are Lionsgate. Um I, is Touchstone still its own separate, or are they with oh, somebody? Man, I don't even know. But Universal okay. themselves, I mean, it's it's one of the huge ones. Yeah, uh, the Fast and the Furious. Now, yeah. if that's a movie I would go to the theater to watch. Yeah. So, uh, they're gonna have to figure that out <laughs> for sure. I think everybody just needs to chill. Yeah. Um, you know, it's it's it's. It is what it is. There's yeah. going to be a point where nobody's going to be going to movies anyway. So I hope not. I mean, um, I honestly think there might be, you know, a point where that because if, if people are saying that this coronavirus is going to come back in the in the fall, yeah. even stronger than than we this hope. go around. We hope not, though. We hope not. Yeah. But if it that's could. what if that's what's going on, we're not going to see a movie in theaters for like another year. Bring back more so, drive through or drive ins. I would love that. Me too. I, I love drive-ins anyway. Yeah. There's the uh, Winchester over on Western. Love it. Yeah. Uh, I would I would love to own a drive-in. That would be awesome. Let's put that on our list, Cameo. Let's do it. Hey, before we get out of here, we're about to wrap it up. But before we do, I want to show everybody, I'm pretty excited. Like, we got some fan art. Now, we had the incredibly chubby bulk that Jerry Bennett did for us. Mm -hmm. but Derek Sharp, who, who's done some tattoos for me and he's cooking us up a new logo even, which I think is yep. going to be awesome. We, he, we, uh, we teased the, uh, fan art on, uh, on yeah. social media. Yeah. You've seen it. Let me, I'm popping it up on the screen right now. Uh, so if you, uh, are watching, like if you're also monitoring on Facebook, you'll see it. Cameo, what do you think about this? Cause I think it's, freaking fantastic okay hold on this hasn't popped up yet <laughs> i bet uh it's probably up now can you see it no oh wow you're way behind yeah well you've seen this though or maybe i'm way back yeah oh there it is okay <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome yes that is so awesome tell tell me about like what you think about this which features me and you in it that's pretty cool. I like that a lot. <laughs> well, because uh, is this is this like a take on Krang? Yes, yeah. yes. The 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 nineteen nineties uh, yeah. uh, Krang. Yeah. So and of course it has me in there because I'm the brain. Uh huh. So and I'm the muscle. So no, I don't think that's that, what it meant. That, that that this means that I carry you. So. <laughs> uh, but I we think go. for you. So. <laughs> uh -huh. Well, you know, yeah. tomato, tomato. Yeah. <laughs> but I love it. Thank you so much to Derek Sharp. He is working yes, on Derek, that's awesome. some more like a different kind of logo for us. But we were thinking about taking that one, uh, the cameo Brad Crane, and making some stickers and T-shirts. So we, we want to know who would want one. Uh, get you your know what? pre-orders the, in now. Yeah, yeah. Get your pre-orders in. And then, you know, we and, might do a, a few. And if we get like a, a a good amount of response to it, we'll we'll do some more. Okay, cool. That sounds good to yeah. me. So I, we're gonna put. Uh, Let me pop it up uh, one more time. Chris, little person, he's uh he's gonna be one of them. Did he already say he wants one? No, but I'm sure he will. He better. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Chewy, Christian Cox, we're gonna get him one. Yeah, yeah. So I got. So, I'm yeah, gonna get one. So far. I'm gonna get oh, one. Yeah. I'm, I mean, shoot, I, we got to put wearing, it on I'm the black T-shirt though. I'm wearing a Ninja Turtle shirt anyway. So that nice. 
Yeah. We got to so, yeah, put I'll it on a black t shirt and we'll be golden. Uh, Lori says she wants one. Lori, you're going to get one for free because that's my aunt. Oh. All family members get one for free. Nice. That's nice. a big family. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right. Well, well, oh, so I got to order like 20. Nah, if it's your family, <laughs> I might need the down payment or something. <laughs> 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 all right cameo i think that's yeah. it for me um i'm probably gonna be watching last dance this weekend oh okay here's something that i i'm thinking about doing i'm uh, i've seen a lot of people doing it too so i'm gonna jump in on it and watch avengers Endgame again and maybe the one right before it okay so what do you think should we watch it again together and then uh see if we noticed anything we didn't notice Sure, yeah. I'm down with that. All right. Maybe we'll talk about that on the next show amongst all the other news and nerd updates and all mm -hmm. that. Are, are you still on the radio, Cameo? Yes, I am. A radio legend, Cameo, on Wild 104.9. You know, this summer, I will be on air for 14 years. That's impressive. That's crazy. I love it. That is crazy. Uh, you also do... The nerd updates on the Joey and Heather show on mm -hmm. Wednesdays, right? Yep, Wednesdays at nine. So tune into that. And me, I'm just just chugging along, doing the Nerds to Men podcast, selling all this weed. Yeah, yeah. This pot county cannabis, medicinal concentrates. Get that <laughs> at your local dispensary. Cameo is going to be selling it soon. <laughs> yes, I yes. Keep, I keep trying to talk them into coming and working for me, and uh, I think we're, I know. We're gonna I, get I'm, there. I'm, I'm, I'm almost there. I'm almost there. Speaking of being a J Dub, cameo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just heard that Prince was a Jehovah Witness. You didn't know that? I thought I told you that. I think. Well, okay. So I think you may have, and then my mom told me the other day, and I was like. Mm -hmm. So when did that happen? Do you know? Um, I don't know when it happened. Um, Is he I, the most famous J Dub next to you? Um, I mean, he's like one step lower than me, mm -hmm. but uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> no. But I think so. I think so. All right. So like Adam Sandler did in that one song, tell me all the famous J Dubs, and if you want to do it like along with the guitar, that's okay too. Yeah, I, I don't know. I have to do my research. Okay, so next <laughs> next episode, I want the J-Dub song. I promise you next episode. The J-Dub song <laughs> by Cameo. I can't promise you any episode that would happen. <laughs> I will find a list. All right. <laughs> but hey, having Prince, I mean... Yeah, that's why a lot of people were kind of upset when they went to his concerts and some of the uh, the freak nastier songs that he had. Yeah. Uh, or has in his uh, uh, Rolodex, <laughs> he wouldn't play. Oh, okay. I got you. Yeah. So, like, uh, I think it, uh, Darling Nikki. Yeah. Um, uh, what was another one? Or he was, there were some where he would play up until where it got super nasty. Yeah. Or he wouldn't play him at all. But uh, yeah, there were some, some songs. Or, so, I think whenever he stopped doing that, or when he started doing that, that's when his uh, he became a Jehovah's Witness. Interesting. So that'd be a good way to test when he became one. Um, again, though, that's been your J-Dub minute for this week. <laughs> yep. All right. All right, Cameo. You have a great weekend. Everybody at home, y'all have a great weekend. We're Stay gonna, safe. We're going to wash your hands. Yeah. We're going to watch Cough. Westworld this weekend. Yeah, Bo. The season finale. And then we'll have a new episode after that. Yep. All right. Well, remember to keep a smile keep on it. your face. Oh, keep it nerdy. Yeah. <laughs>